Good morning, everyone. How are you? It is B, and we are here with Morning Tea with B. And the time on the clock when I started this video was 10.22. So 10.22 might be of great significance to a lot of you out there. Now, uh, there have been a lot of people asking me why. Um, guys, hold on a second. I'm going to let the dogs out. Okay, they, they agreed to settle down, so I didn't have to let them outside. But anyway, um, a lot of people have been asking me, you know, why I'm separating out morning tea with B when I used to add my psychic downloads in front of my tarot readings. Well, there's two uh, reasons here. One is that a lot of times my energy can get so involved in the message with my psychic downloads that I create an energetic signature for a period of time and I want to make sure that the tarot readings are not tainted with that. Um, sometimes it will be the same message, other times it will not, but I want to keep them separate for that major reason. The other reason is in the past, this is what I did. And I have, a, I have a playlist with morning tea with B and it, it looks a little bit weird when, you know, I have morning tea with B and then I have like, you know, six months with nothing on there and then I have another one. It, it looks very, very inconsistent to the viewer. So I just wanted to let everybody know about that. But we've got some significant significant uh, psychic downloads that came in this morning. <clears throat> I do not know how long this particular reading is going to be, but yeah, go get your tea, go get your coffee, go get your ginger ale, go get your water with lemon or whatever you drink, kombucha. This is going to be interesting. Okay. Oh boy. Okay. So this first one was really, really odd this morning. And um, I'm just going to tell you what I saw and what I was doing within the reading. For those of you that do not believe spiritual warfare, or you do believe spiritual warfare is happening, I'm going to give you a big confirmation on that. It's really unlike anything you've probably ever seen. There are so many different energetic timelines that everybody's really kind of fighting the same battle, but those environments and those situations look quite different. Different tools, different types of environments, different people. People look different. They don't look like we look here. Um, so just be aware of that. So... I was part of a team. This is going to sound crazy. I was part of a team. It was like a reconnaissance team. It was an invest investigatory team. We were going into people's homes. And it, it, it felt to me like I, I knew who this person's home was. It, it may have it been mine at, at some point in time in my life, but there was this door. It was like an attic in the upstairs and there was this door and it was a very thin door. I mean, you'd really, really have to kind of crouch to get through that door and there was something in there. I felt like something was in there and there was. It was like a, it was like a dark entity, put it that way. It's been captured it's been kept for quite some time <laughs> in an in an attic i mean it, it, it sounds crazy right you'd think that you know a dark entity or a powerful dark entity would be you know in some sort of you know high security you know prison with 
fire bars and electric bars and everything. No, this was just in an attic, almost like there was a spell over this particular location or some type of vortex, some type of door. Okay. Now someone, someone was messing with something they shouldn't be messing with. I'll tell you that right now. These dark entities are not playing. And they're getting very skilled. And that's why those of us that will ascend, some of us will stay behind, but those of us that will ascend, we, we got to go tackle another uh, piece of the spiritual warfare. And like I said, people think this bifurcation, this ascension is, oh, I'm free and clear. No, you're just being prepared for another, you know, another set of lessons. Some people may call it a spiritual battle. Others may call it, you know, maybe you are, you know, let's talk in galactic terms for a minute. Uh, maybe you're part of a special division of, of, you know, the galactic space, whatever. And um, you've gone from being a navigator to perhaps occupying the planet that you are occupying and start up a new a new um, beginning there. Okay. So you were a navigator, but now your skills are needed someplace else. Okay, I hope that makes sense. But <clears throat> on this timeline, where we're at now, even though people are getting on the boat and they're going into their little boat cabin so that they can heal and they can come back out and get um, repaired so that they can be given their next assignment. Um, I started speaking in this home. All right, let's go back. I, I, I don't want to cause any confusion with my story. So now we're back in the house where this entity is somehow confined. And <clears throat> I was in front of everybody. Like I was in front of everybody. Like I was like the lead detective or some stuff like that. And I started speaking. It was not my voice. It was a man's voice, a very, very low man's voice. And this person was extremely focused, extremely focused. So I may have actually been in that particular energy so I could feel the emotions associated with it. It's, it's very possible. Okay. So I looked around the room and I saw, and it was a woman's face, by the way, it was a woman or someone identifying as a woman. So it was a woman's face. Now, granted, Nothing had come out of the attic door. Nothing had come out of the attic door at all. This woman's face was actually imprinting itself in the walls. Like the barrier in this attic location was, it was almost like a pliable material. So you could see the face imprint trying to get out of this particular area where they were contained or where they were confined. Okay. So I saw that happening and then there was someone that came in around the corner and their head was down, or I'm sorry, I turned the corner into a different part of the room and I was not, obviously, I was not in the space where this dark entity was. I was outside of that space. I was on the periphery. I was outside of the confinement area, but adjacent to it, okay? And <clears throat> I turned the corner, <clears throat> and there was a very, 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 very dark person there, another woman between the ages of like 40 and 50, something like that. And um, she had a cloak on 
<clears throat> and she was looking down at the ground. And it appeared to me that this person was taken over by dark entities. Like serious dark entities. It's 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 mind boggling. They were it, it it's kinda like in the I think it was the Game of Thrones. Was it the Game of Thrones? No. It was Lord of the Rings. When Gandalf goes to the king who has a spell or a curse on him, and he goes and he breaks that spell, and then the king his face changes and he's more cognitively astute. <clears throat> so anyway, let's get back to it. This person did something that they shouldn't have done. So see, that dark entity should have been quiet the entire time. There shouldn't have been them trying to get out of this particular confinement area. And um, it was like a Pandora's box scenario. Someone opened up Pandora's box. And so she was just standing there. And she was um, completing her program, so to speak. And you could tell when certain dark entities would switch places. Like you'd have a dark entity who was a trickster and then you'd have a dark entity who was, you know, the, the destroyer. And then you'd have a dark entity that was, you know what I mean? So like they went through several, several different uh, types of personality traits within one. And so I was in front of the group and th I think I was with a group of maybe like 10 or 12 people. And um, <clears throat> these people behind me were very, very special people. I think they call them the chosen um, or some of the chosen because believe me, there's many people out there who are considered the chosen, but they're not, you know, they're numerous people, okay? They're not like 14 people behind me, but these people were extremely, extremely powerful. Because they had like this pure light energy associated with them. Now, either I was the one that had access to these people for the greater good, or I had to protect them with my own internal power. Okay, it sounds so weird because I'm making it kind of sound like super superhero-ish, but I just I just have to tell you the story. So I was in front of these people and I put my hand up and kind of like a kind of like a superhero would do with special powers. They put their hand up to block stuff, block energies. And what I heard coming out of this dark, I'll, I'll call her a dark witch, what I heard coming out of her mouth was very, very interesting. And see, sometimes they do that. They, they couch these visions in reality, what's really going on behind the scenes. But then they put me in some sort of weird environment in order to give me the message. So someone's using blood magic. And I don't talk about magic so yeah, for a long... I, I, I don't even... I know things only through my psychic abilities. I don't look up the Book of the Dead. I don't, I don't have any didactic skill in anything dark at all. And I've said this to many people many times. I clear, I protect, I activate. That's all I can do. That's, that is my contract. And so um, when she raised her head and she looked right into my eyes, she marched right at me. 
right at me. And her hands were out in front of her and they were two fists extended. I think they were two fists. And then she put the two fists together that created a bond with each fist going against one another, like the light and the dark, the uh, love and the hate, you know, whatever. So like if you were to take your arms, put them out in front of you, then bend your elbows so that your fists were like looking at each other and then you would fashion them like a puzzle piece with your knuckles, creating this, uh, it looks like it's a, it's kind of like a, a hectagon between the fists, the arms, and the chest. Okay, and she was marching toward me and she goes, this is what she said, everybody wants to do blood magic. Oh my God. Okay, I am, okay, that was weird. Um, I can't answer that doorbell. Um, and I'm definitely going to leave that in the video. Definitely not letting that person in, whoever it may be. I don't know. Um, but, okay. Sorry about that. Oof. Give me a second. Everything happens for a reason, guys. So, um, and my house is protected, by the way. My house is completely gridded. People have to have a certain signature to even be near my house. But some people can figure it out. Hold on, hold on. Okay, we're going to continue this even though there's a little bit of um, background noise. So the, um, the dark witch came in and she looked straight into my eyes. She's saying, you know, everybody wants to do blood magic. And so I want to let you know really, really quick before we keep going here. And I am so sorry for all of these interruptions, guys. It... It just feels like, to me, like this was supposed to happen. Um, what happens when someone accepts, whether knowingly or unknowingly, blood magic? This can be done in any number of ways. People can put it in food. They can put it in drinks. I, I cannot believe this, guys. Uh, hold on a second, please. Hold on.
Okay, guys, this is crazy. That was nuts. Completely nuts. Um, so, I am going to put timestamps below so that people can be part of what just happened. And before I cut this off for a long period of time, I did state that I have gridded my house and only certain energies are allowed in uh, because my house is protected. And so these people kept ringing my doorbell, ringing my doorbell, ringing my and I thought, these people are not going to go away. So I wanted to make sure it wasn't somebody that I knew or something like that, and I'm sure they heard me talking. And so then I had to grab my dogs. My dogs were going nuts. I had to grab my dogs, put them outside, and put you guys on pause. And so then I was able to go to the door. And they were walking away from my house. And you are not going to believe what they said. I said, okay, how can I help you? And they were like, um, sorry, we've got the wrong house. We've got the wrong house. Interesting. All right, let's get back into... Let's get back into the... Um, story here again my my apologies for for those for that unbelievable interruption So anyway, I'm going to have to sadly re-listen to this particular morning tea with B. Um, so this dark entity came towards this lead detective. I don't want to call it me anymore, okay? I, I don't like that. It doesn't feel right. So I'm going to call it the lead detective, okay? So this dark entity came towards the lead detective, marched right at them. And they stated... <clears throat> Everybody wants to do blood magic. Like it was, it was this flippant attitude. It was this attitude of, you know, people don't know what they're toying with. And like I said, blood magic can be done in very, very specific ways. A lot of times, people will pray over, um, you know, you pray over food and you use like, I hope this food nourishes people. I hope this food, you know. Um, uh, assists in the healing of whoever partakes of it. But there are other things that can happen. For example, sometimes people use like treats like cookies or cakes or candies or whatever. And, um, and I don't want to scare anybody, but you just got to hear me out here. It really depends on what is, what is energetically uh, transmitted into whatever this person is making. You know, they may be thinking, <clears throat> and they may even put their own their own flavor into it, if you get what I mean when I say blood magic. <clears throat> and then they speak a spell over it. Everyone who eats of this, you know, peanut butter bar is going to fall madly in love with me. Or anybody that eats of this peanut butter bar is going to be easily manipulated. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anybody that eats of this of this cookie will be um, binded or bound. Okay, now here's the interesting thing. Have you ever like been at like a potluck or whatever and there is some sort of food there that in most cases, you would 100% fill your pockets with, like, like a cookie that you absolutely love. Or someone drops off a cookie for you in your cubicle or something like that. 
and you're looking at it and you're looking at it and you're looking at it and you decide to maybe give it to somebody else or you decide to maybe put it in the drawer and then you forget about it and it's not good anymore, whatever. Your, your energy is telling you there's something about something, some sort of an intention or some sort of energy associated with that particular um, creation that you should not partake in. I remember it was just a little bit, yeah, it was, it was under a year, a year ago. I was traveling and there was a person who shoved these cookies in my face, like, have one, have one, have one. And I thought, why are you being so insistent that I have one of your cookies? And what was so interesting is each of the cookies were contained in their own little container. So it was like a big Ziploc bag and then each of the cookies were kind of in their own container. They were wrapped separately. So in order to get this person to go away, um, I decided, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this cookie. I'm going to put it in my bag. And when I reached my destination, you know, I'll take a look at it later. I never ate the cookie, ever. Because when I looked at it, I could see the energy coming out of it that there was a spell associated with it or there was some sort of energy associated with it. And I just, I just threw it away because I was like, this is not going to go into my body at all. So remember, especially like with dark witches, people who do blood magic, whatever, they, they, how do I say this? They're vampires. They get energy through stealing yours. And some have gotten pretty savvy. Some of them don't even need to be in your energetic field. They will actually put you know, for a long period of time, like it used to be. But they can do spell work or put energies into food or into something and gift it to you and feed off of that connection. It's almost like a, it's like a tag, right? It's like a tag. You know, there's all of these things that are out there right now where you know, women are going shopping or whatever and, you know, someone s slips a tag into their bag and now they're being GPS tracked. It's the same type of thing, but it's energetically. This is a very, very devious, manipulative and dark, dark energy. That's why some people, <clears throat> after they're gifted something, they feel different. They feel like you know, they go through these uh, episodes of anger and they're not, they're just not themselves. It's, it's almost like their whole soul has been taken over. That could be the work of this. So this lady, this dark witch said, everybody wants to do blood magic. And what's happening is people dabbling in the dark arts, this is causing a two-pronged problem, okay? The number one problem is that these people were not trained in a specific way. The way those that are trying to control the dark entities to do their bidding have been trained. Some of these people have been trained like, I mean, they went to school for it, you know? But these other people, they're getting online and they're looking up spell work and they're doing this and then they're, they're chanting and they're energy... You know, they're doing energy manipulation, all this stuff. And this is causing this, this uh, undulation in the energetic resonance. And it's interfering with the ultimate goal. So now, nobody can really pick up what's going on. Because it could be somebody you're very close to. 
and you don't even know it. And remember, um, dark witches, black witches, you know, dark spellcasters, you know, a lot of times they're very appealing. They, it's, it's almost like they got everybody mesmerized around them. But these people find out real quick that these are black widows, including the men. They are black widows. They suck the life right out of you. And they anything that makes you happy, they remove it through manipulation, lies, coercion, da 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 da, da so on and so forth. Let's keep going. So <clears throat> this detective put his hand up and he told the people behind him to get behind him. Stay behind me. And it was like a superhero move. And so once that black witch, or that I'm sorry, I don't want to call it a black witch, I want to call it like a dark entity, okay? They walk towards this detective very, 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 very quickly, put their fists together, and there was an energy field that came out of them, okay? But there was also an energy field that came out of the detective. <clears throat> but it seemed to me like the detective either kind of sacrificed himself for a moment in time or he was either maybe showing other people how to do it or whatever. But it felt to me like this entity was stopped. Okay, whether it was the dark witch that was stopped or whether it was the uh, entity in the attic that was stopped. And then I heard what they do. So these people that do this blood magic or they take these sacrifices. Hold on just a second. They go through periods of like once they're initiated into it, periods of great darkness. It's great darkness. It feels almost surreal. Um, uh, nightmares and, and everything. And it lasts for three to five days or right around there. And then they get up one morning and everything has changed. And they take their place as their place of influence to ensure that these dark energies stay around. They become other people. You know, some people may call it cloning. I, I, I wouldn't say cloning. I would say they become other people. With influence. Okay, so that is the first download that I got. And I, again, please accept my apologies for all of the interruptions. They were there for a reason. So just listen to those. And the remaining of these, <clears throat> excuse me, I am going to be so ready when this, whatever it is that I'm getting rid of out of my throat is gone. Okay. Because I've been detoxing for a while now. Um, yes, so we're going to go through the rest of these and hopefully go through them quickly. It's just unbelievable how crazy things got once I started talking about my first download. For others of you, the second download I got, and this is going to be very, very quick, be careful where you park. Be careful where you park. I saw somebody parking in a parking spot they shouldn't have parked in. They got a ticket. So be careful where you park. Also be careful um, where you park as it relates to you, maybe um, going on the side of the road or, <clears throat> excuse me, Going to the side of the road, maybe texting, like don't text and drive. Um, 
yeah, being on the side of the road, you know, just go to a safe place and a legal space to park. Let's just put it that way. That is what we all should be doing any day. Anyway, any day? Yes, both. Okay. The other um, thing, and you know what? I'm going to leave this to last because this one's very, very important. Okay, let's go to the next one. There is a literal disconnect between who you are and what you think right now. A lot of people are in transition and they feel confused. They feel like they're walking zombies. They feel like they don't know what's happening. How did I get here? It's like coming out of um, coming out of anesthesia. Or it's like um, when I was in the military, okay, we donated blood. And um, I was sitting at parade rest. Next thing I know, I saw a kaleidoscope and I fainted. And my squad was great. Man, they caught me. I wasn't hurt. I didn't hit my head. But my TI, they took me immediately to get food, salt, you know, get my system replaced. And when I came to, I was like, where am I? I was in basic training. But when I woke up, I was not in, my mind was not in basic. I was back home. And I was uncomfortable and I wanted to, I wanted to do what I wanted to do. And the TI had to let me know, no, you are in basic training. You are in the military. You will do what I say you do. He was very kind and very, very supportive, getting me back into the, you know, my, my cognitive abilities. But he had to keep his, his demeanor as the TI. He couldn't have... He couldn't look at me and say, oh, you know, poor B, she she fainted and let me give her a hug and let me. No, he had to stay in character. This energy is where there is a disconnect between who you are and what you think. So now you have to try and get those two to coalesce so that you know who you are and you are what you think. This is very powerful right now. <clears throat> For some of you, you may need to keep your moves hidden right now. Very, very important. We're going on to the next download. Keep your moves hidden right now. For some of you, not all of you, some of you. <clears throat> something is going on regarding you can't tell anyone and you can't question anyone. So what does that mean? You've kind of backed off. You're doing your thing. You're still making moves underneath the surface. You're moving forward. People may not know what you're doing. Okay, there you go. There's the story. And you've got people who are close to you, good friends with you, um, good collaborators with you, always have been good collaborators with you, and some of them fall off. And they're falling off for a reason. You're not an energetic match with them anymore. Move on very, very quickly. What, what these energies, this, this spiritual battle that we have going on with these energies and what they're doing is um, they're bringing energies into our sphere and we have to make sure that we are not triggered. We have to make sure that we are not triggered. And it's so difficult to maintain that. 
because whoever these dark entities are, whoever these dark people are, whoever these controlling, manipulative, lying people are, whoever they are, the narcissists, whatever you want to call them, they want to see the divine feminines and the divine masculines lose it. <clears throat> they want to see them be angry, question, And I found it very, very interesting that these people at my door, they would not go away. And I did get frustrated. I did. I had to pull my dogs away from the door because I was not expecting anyone. I thought by ignoring them, they would just go away. I put my dogs out in the back. And then I went to the door, and when I opened the door up, they were already on their way to their car because they said they have the wrong house. I'm curious what you guys think about that. So keep your moves hidden, and if anybody falls away, let them go. Don't even worry about it. Just keep moving forward one step in front of the other. Don't question them. Don't contact them anymore. If, for example, if you're trying to get a hold of somebody and they're not returning your calls, do not, do not contact them anymore. Do not, do not, just do not. Let it go. If they're meant to be in your life, they'll be in your life. If they're not, they won't, period. Let them think what they want to think. You know who you are. So some of you may need to cloak. And this is a protective measure. Cloaking is very um, powerful in that you can actually go to a function or you can go to the grocery store or you can go to wherever and you can actually cloak yourself energetically so either you look like somebody else or people just can't see you. They don't register your energy. And this allows you to get in and out very, very quickly. Like I said, there's a reconnaissance energy that's coming through here. So you may need to cloak. And there are ways to do that. And, um, you know, I may show people how to do that eventually. Um, the next download was, as the bifurcation commences, others will want to project their energies on you. Very important to stay away from narcissistic people right now. So let, this goes back to what I was saying earlier. Um, <clears throat> somebody wants to project their energies onto you. And you'll know when this is happening because you'll feel like you're losing yourself. You're going to feel like you're losing yourself. You're going to feel like, why am I drinking so much? Why am I smoking so much? Why am I so frustrated all the time? Why am I so angry all the time? It is not you. It's someone else in your environment that is like that. What they do is they project all of that onto you. They tell people that that's how you are. And if the other person, who's probably an idiot, uh, believes those lies they create a, a, an energetic cord. And you all of a sudden, especially if you're an empath, can absorb those energies. But once you get yourself out of that environment and all of a sudden like you're, it's almost like you've woken up, you're awake, you're, you're aware, you're like, oh my gosh, like, you know, what have I been doing with my life? The person that was around you or the person that was around them casting spells between one another was actually saying that you were the problem, that you had the addictions, that you, you know, were unhinged, that you were toxic. And it may have very well looked like you were, but it wasn't you. 
It was the other Yahoo. And they're good at it. Remember, divine feminines and divine masculines, man, your tests are not for the weak of heart. You have to be able to face it head on. Recognize it and then let it play out. Just like that lead detective did in the first download I had. Put his hand up. Whoever this person was that was projecting their insecurities, their jealousy, their stalking, their codependence, their control onto you. And you got out of it. Guess what's happening now? They've either chose someone else to project onto so that people don't figure out their mask or for the majority of them their energies are starting to seep through they're starting to see it because see people have been playing around people have been that Pandora's box got open that entity is no longer in that cage they're actually outside of that cage they're still contained but they're outside of the cage and their face images are coming through the walls. People can see it's trying to get out. It's like people who are under spell work and the person putting spells on them, they think they're the most beautiful, kind, loving, sweet, you know, understanding person in the world and they think that they are just the most beautiful person in the world I had this actually happen to me someone someone said this person is like I looked at their picture and I'm like they're not that beautiful in my eyes because I see energy right so what I did was I took an actual physical picture of this person and I went to one of my friends who is you know, not a narcissist, uh, and they're they're you know God fearing. They're energetically you know contained, whatever. And um, I was like, yeah, this is this is that person. And their reaction was repulsive, repulsive, and. I was like, whoa, so I was obviously picking up on something with this, this dark entity attachment to them. And um, their response was like, ugh, ugh. But everybody in that environment, in the environment they were in, they thought that person walked on water. They thought that person was the most beautiful person on the face of the planet. They thought that that, that was Jezebel energy, okay? And trust me, if the energy was actually pure, the person that I gave that picture to, they would have been like, oh, what a beautiful energy. How, what a beautiful, kind person. What a beautiful soul. They would. But they didn't. So that's one of my experiences from about... Um, Well, a year ago, but I got out of it. And um, yeah, you just have to use your network to help you through some of these hard times. I'm sorry, this is getting so long. We're almost at an hour. Okay, keep your moves hidden. You may need to cloak. As the bifurc commences others will want to project their energies on you very important to stay away from narcissistic people right now anybody project projecting energies to you um, there are some uh, practices that you can do right now um, in your life that will really really help you um, if you need to get rid of confusions or blockages um, find a space that you haven't cleaned or you haven't 
you know, and maybe some of you are clean freaks, okay, so you may not have anything, but we have, we all have at least one, um, and just tackle it and start to put it in order. Get the chi moving, get the energy flowing, okay? Clean a room, clean a space, reorganize a closet, reorganize, you know, um, your cupboards, whatever it is, your spice rack, who knows? Some of you are going to start feeling the desire to reorganize something or clear something or clean something. It's going to be of great, great significance to you. Some of you may feel like, I just want to wash everything in my home. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just feels like there's this cleansing that's happening. Um, if you need truth or clarity, clean a window, chandelier, or a piece of glass. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> if you need truth or clarity, or to know where you're going, or to see things for what they are, clean a window, chandelier, or a piece of glass. The next one, if you need to move forward or get unstuck from a situation, you got to move your energies. And I know this is going to sound crazy, but jump up and down and shake your extremities. You know, you see that a lot of times, uh, like right before a boxing fight. See how they jump up and down and they shake their extremities? It's almost like they're shaking something off, like a like a dog does. When a dog gets wet, it shakes and it gets rid of that water. Okay? It's how they, you know, get that energy, <coughs> gosh, get that energy and that chi moving and they're able to operate on all cylinders, fire on all cylinders. I am actually going to be doing this today. Now, the last one, that I want to talk about before we get into the major one that I skipped. But the last one, I don't know if you guys remember this. Um, that song when you were a kid, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and your face will for surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Now, I know that this has been redone for, you know, Sometimes, like religion classes, they'll replace it with, you know, if you love God or whatever. But it, it can be used in several different ways. And there's something very powerful about this. And I was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? Something this simple? Are you kidding me? I was blown away. I will tell you right now. If you do that, you sing that song, and you truly feel that way, and you create this energy of movement around you, your life will change. Your life will change. It's one of the keys. It's one of the keys. I am dead serious. It is one of the keys. I'm like sitting here and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is one of the keys. You guys think on that and you let me know. Now the last one. Then I got to get going. Gosh, I just, I feel like this was just a messy, messy reading. So please accept my sincerest apologies. Um, where is it at? Okay, the last one. I am going to be putting a link below to a video on YouTube that I want you guys to watch. And I don't want to scare anybody. This is not my intention. This is not what I am intending. This is not my purpose. But it is a very, very important beginning. But these beginnings, these revelations, these new lives, these new chapters in our lives, they're, they're, they must have gone through some sort of destruction. 
There had to have been. Let's just go through the list. A job loss. A relationship loss. A health issue. A family dynamic that's conflicting or frustrating. Um, someone being found out or someone's false mask falling off. Um, it, it could be anything. But the energy itself is coming across as something like, well, I went through that or they went through that and I'll help them through that or I just got to, you know, put one, one foot in front of the other and get over this. I don't think people realize that this, you know, you've got the, the macrocosm and the microcosm, right? So what you're feeling and what you're going through is an energetic shift that is put into, <clears throat> and I'm, I've used this analogy before, it's put into the machine, it's put into the Willy Wonka machine to make the everlasting gobstopper. And one of it's a boot, and then the other one is a flower, and then the other one is a sock, and the other one is... And then he mixes it around and boom, pops out this everlasting gobstopper. This attachment that I'm going to put, or this video link that I'm going to put below in the description box, is what is happening outside of what created it. The everlasting gobstopper. So you think your little trials and tribulations are foolish and nobody cares about my trials and my tribulations. Oh, yes, they do. Very much so. Because the quicker you heal and the quicker you allow yourself to say, I'm cleaning this energy out of my life, the quicker everybody heals. And there are a portion of people who absolutely 100% are awake. And they will take the right actions to protect themselves and others and their loved ones. The other ones. The apathy. The disconnect. The removal from source energy. They're going to have to go down a different path. And whatever that path is, I don't know. I know there have been some astrology scholars out there and, and psychics out there that are saying that some people are just simply not going to be able to um, energetically function pretty soon. Like how the energy is going to shift where they're at. It's like a, it's like they they turn to space dust. I know it sounds crazy, but just use that as an analogy for right now. You know, some people are just in a program like the Matrix. But here's the thing. There's too many Neos right now. Remember the Matrix? When Neo was the one that woke up and he was in the pod and he was living this fantastic life and everything, but that's not really how everything was. Imagine if a million Neos woke up at the same time. The spiritual battle is here. You play a very, very large role. Please do not get sucked in by the matrix. Do not get sucked in by the apathy. Do not get sucked in by the bright, shiny thing. Do not get sucked in by these dark witches and dark warlocks. These people have dark entities attached to them. You, once you meditate enough and once you clear your energy enough and once you maybe sequester yourself for three or four days, I know sometimes that's hard for people. But if you can give yourself 
three to four days to really, really clear your energy. Drink a lot of water, a lot of filtered water, lemon, organic, um, even fast. You are going to see all that you did not see before. So the uh, link I'm going to be providing is going to be the one where Jeff Goldblum says time's up. See, I'm, I'm going to talk just a little bit more. I, I have to get this out. So I, I thank you kindly for letting me get this out of my system because they keep sending me downloads and I know I have to end this freaking video. But <clears throat> I, I would say transmission. But Jeff Goldblum is those of you out there that are so curious. You are willing to look deeper. <clears throat> they don't want me to talk about this. Jeez. I didn't, I didn't cough barely at all yesterday. And now I'm coughing again. Um, and it's just gunk that's coming out. Um, I will be fine eventually, of course. So, and I feel the healthiest I've probably ever felt in a long time. But you are the ones that are digging deep into the in, in let me get this word right, intricate, intricacies. You are in the intricacies of this. And you are seeing a pattern. And you are looking at that pattern using your God-given talents, using your special gifts that were granted just to you. And you're saying there's something more here. Let's look further into this. And then you talk with someone else who's, you know, psychically inclined or they have their gifts and they're aware of their gifts and they don't dwell in the dark and they don't dwell in negative or toxic energies. And you're like, hey, would you look at this for a minute? Oh my gosh, I'm seeing a pattern. Okay, you see a pattern and I see a pattern. But pattern I'm seeing and the pattern you're seeing is the exact same pattern, but we're getting there from different gifts. Some of you may have the gift of sight. Some of you may have the gift of clear audience. Some of you may have the gift of pattern recognition. Some of you may have the gift on and on and on. <clears throat> so many different gifts <clears throat> at so many different levels. Time's up. Why? Pluto will be fully still on the 10th of October. Get ready. This is going to get interesting. And if you think about Pluto, Pluto creates destruction in order to start anew. A new day dawning, a new beginning a new type of clarity, a new happiness. Rebuild. Get rid of all the toxicity. It's kind of like in the Bible with Sodom and Gomorrah. God said, I am destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. Goodbye. And they only found one good man. in that entire city. There has to be a rebuilding through destruction. It is coming. Be prepared and the more that you let go of fear the more you let go of toxic energy, the more courageous you are, 
the more pure your body is, this cannot and will not affect you. It's not an energetic match. So do what you need to do. And for those of you interested in the uh, October 10th Pluto going station direct in Capricorn in my uh, rumble, or on my Rumble channel, uh, the dailies that are going to be coming up here, I will link that Rumble channel in the description box so you can go directly to that Rumble channel and listen to it. I am not going to put... Um, the planetary ingresses or the reversals, the retrogrades or the directs or the stations on YouTube. They're all going to be on my Rumble channel, but you will always get the new moon and the full moon astrological energies on both Rumble and YouTube. Okay. All right. I think I've talked long enough. And again, my sincerest apologies for all of the craziness at the start of this video. I wish all of you the best. Much light, much love, many blessings, and catch you on the flip side.